Hi everyone, my name is Steve Canfield. I'm uh, making a presentation today on um, uh, for Manufacturing Day 2020, woohoo. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about cobots. So let me share my screen. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Again, I'm talking, my name is Steve Canfield. I'm a faculty member in mechanical engineering. I teach robotics and mechatronics. Uh, I'm also uh, a technologist uh, at a company that develops uh, commercial applications of robots. And we are here to talk about collaborative robots. Um, now, my slides, I, I, I'm gonna keep focused on the uh, cobots. So let me jump through a few things here. You know, robots have been, but, but to talk about cobots, we're gonna talk about robots for just a quick minute. You know, robots are everywhere and they've been around for a while. I've got this made up chart that we look at um, down here where I talk about interest of robots and you can see robots really started peaking in interest and in application in the 60s and they quickly became widespread up through the 80s, kind of related to many of our big productivity gains in manufacturing, kind of what waned. And now it's shooting up again as robots go farther and farther. They're really coming out of the factories. Robots take all shape and size. You can see they look like this. They can be scary. It does ask the question, are robots going to take over? Maybe. I don't want to be the first that's attacking robots. Anyhow, let's talk about cobots for a few minutes. Uh, cobots are defined as collaborative robots. These are ro collaborative robots where we concatenate that to cobot. Uh, IFR gives a specific, that's the International Federation for Robotics, gives the definition robots intended for direct human interaction with shared space or proximity. That's shared space with a human, robot sharing space with a human. Trad in traditional robots, we do the exact opposite. We keep robots safely separated from humans or vice versa, humans safely separate away. With cobots, we're moving them together. If you think about people working, if you think about people doing con uh, complex tasks, they're working together, they're holding, they're passing tools, uh, they're collaborating on a prod, on an activity, and that's the ultimate goal for, goal for cobots, to work hand in hand. Uh, to do this, they of course have to be safe. That's probably one of the biggest things that we have to achieve. They have to be, we have to be safe. Um, now, cobots came out of uh, kind of the initialization as a fairly recent, you know, 20 years ago patent from GM, uh, but frankly, the commercial products didn't come along until much later. Uh, you know, maybe you saw a little bit in the 90s uh, from that work of GM, but frankly, it's been just in the last decade. A couple good examples. Rethink Robotics is probably the one everyone's seen with Baxter. He showed up on TV. He was very popular, and he really changed the face, literally, <laughs> of robot systems. Unfortunately, Baxter and Rethink Robotics is now a closed company. You can no longer buy Baxter. However, he really kicked off a movement that in the background we see some early examples. KUKA had one of the first commercial versions, their LBR series. Universal Robotics is probably the most widespread um, cobot that we see right now. Uh, they hold the biggest market share in cobots. Uh, Yasukawa uh, has a brand. Ogo Robotics started in 2014. Um, and they have this orange arm, as you can see here. FANUC started in 2015, is now developed a full line. ABB has a line of robots. So at this point, it's probably fair to say that all major manufacturers of robots now have or are working on a collaborative robotic line of equipment. We could look at some specs very briefly here to see how they behave. So the theory is that they want to collaborate with humans and that requires safety. It also requires issues around collaboration, but let's talk about the safety. The ways we get safety for cobots is first of all, the weight. They're, they're orders of magnitude lighter. They start to look like the same weight of your own human arm, approximately. Speed, they move much slower so that when you have an impact, both the weight and the speed lower the momentum and the potential damage. That means that, means that their accuracy is going to be lesser. However, um, we find other ways to get accuracy. Also, the stiffness. A traditional robot, you make it very stiff. Cobots, you want them to be less stiff, more like your arm. Your arm is less stiff. And in many cases, we change the exterior shell. We make it softer. We make rounded edges to make that safe, safer. There are a number of standards and guidelines that govern these, and I've listed a few here, but you'll quickly find them. Uh, they're tucked into industrial robots, and then they're actually collaborative robot standards now. And then one of the applications, there are many are welding, and I've listed about five different commercial products um, now that you can buy to try to help you with welding. And I would like to wrap this up by looking at a quick uh, video. 
Um, so here's a, a little example of a cobot. And so you see the robot here at the welder, and now you can see it's collaborative. The operator can walk up and actually manually move that torch by moving the robot around. You see the difference there? So this is not an operator sitting back with a teach pen, but it's actually a person working hand in hand with the robot. The operator teaches the robot, and then, and then ultimately the robot's ready to do uh, its normal welding process. So the operator can easily and quickly teach a job, and then the robot goes off and does that and does that weld. We all want to see a weld here if the robot's going to get over there because he's changing his pose for some reason. And he strikes an arc and then does the work while the work while the weld technician can go off and manage the other task. Okay. Thanks for your time and interest. You can look me up, scanfield at tennesseetech.edu. Take care.